So with this segment, I'm joined by Spencer Chamberlain of Under Oath and Slow Tide, Austin Carlisle, Shaylee Bourget, aka the one man behind Day Shell, as well as Mikey Carvajal of Islander. Welcome to the stream, guys. Thanks for having us. What's up? What's up? Yo, yo. What Dude, I'm so pumped that each and every single one of you are here to really just shine a light on mental health, suicidal ideation, all of the things that people go through behind closed doors, but they don't really feel as confident to talk about it amongst community. That's really why we're here. The event's called Choose to Live because we want to encourage people to choose to live on a daily basis and just let them know that hope isn't too far off. And everyone here today has a super unique story of overcoming drug addiction, suicidal ideation, hating life and more. And I'd love to just start off with each of you explaining a dark time that you've gone through and how you were able to get through it. And if we could start with Mikey, that'd be great. Oh man, I was like, cool, I won't have to go first and then I'm going first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, man, it, it's one of the ones that really comes to mind. Cause I mean, there's more than one time in my life, obviously, where um, I've been depressed or had suicidal thoughts. But for me, when I was in college, um, and this is something that I think a lot of people can relate to, it sounds dumb anytime somebody, you know, people, or at least people think it sounds dumb anytime somebody's in a relationship with a girl or a guy or whatever. And next thing you know, you get your heart broken and you really, really do feel suicidal sometimes with that. It's like when you're out of that mode, you're out of that mode. But when you're in it, it feels like this this thing that's not going to ever fix. And when I was in college, I was dating a girl for a while and she ended up breaking up with me. And there were other things that happened as well in my life, as far as just like not having, you know, an outlet at the time as, as far as like music or whatever. And I think that I had just kind of really stopped doing a lot of the things that I love. And, um, I remember I realized I was suicidal when I started not only thinking about suicide, but I didn't want anybody to find out that I was suicidal at that moment. And that's when I started getting a little scared for myself because I noticed how numb I was. I was in biology class and I was sitting there writing all these things, my feelings out on a piece of paper. And I wrote about how I didn't feel like I, um, I never felt that way before. It wasn't the kind of thing where I was depressed and wanted some sympathy for it. It was the kind of thing where I was depressed and suicidal and I didn't want anyone to know because I might go through with it. And I just sucked it up and told my mom, I've always been able to talk to my mom about stuff, which is awesome. Um, and she taught me through a lot of things. And one of the crazy things that I, I that she told me that a lot of people might not you know think this is the best way to talk to somebody that's suicidal but she told me that that whenever she's like so if you kill yourself what after that like what do you think the world will feel for you or whatever she said people are going to continue um going to work people are going to continue getting hungry and they're going to have to go eat and this impact that you know you might be wanting to make on people um it would it would be gone and she said you could make more of an impact on people because she knew my heart she knew i wanted to make an impact somehow she said you can make an impact on people by sticking around but she said that that impact wasn't going to be there for long for the other people she said of course as my as her as my mom and whatever she was she would never be able to get over that or anything but she sat there and really listened to me through it and and spoke to me about you know, the what if, what if you did kill yourself? Let's talk about, about that. And then let's talk about why, why you shouldn't, instead of just coming to me and being like, no, without any reason, she, she didn't just say, you're my son. I love you. So don't kill yourself. It was, it was genuinely like, what's the purpose? What are you getting out of this? And do you realize that this feeling is for a moment and that tomorrow comes with new opportunities and there's more people in the world than this one girl or this one, you know, college program or what, whatever it was. She said that there's so many more opportunities and things that I could do in my life and people to meet. And um, I don't know. I, I hope that makes some sense. I don't know if I'm kind of rambling all over the place with it. I get nervous on camera. I always have, which is kind of weird being a lead singer of a band because I don't get really nervous on stage. Like, but I get nervous like anytime I'm sitting in front of a computer or, or 
a camera or whatever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just think that if somebody out there is dealing with a breakup or whatever, I just want you to know that it does get better and it can get better. Um, I'm married to my wife now, and um, we've been married 11 and a half years. And if I had never been heartbroken, I would wow. have never met her. And things wouldn't be the way they are now. Wow. Yeah. So sometimes the things that we're going through, the pain that we're going through is just actually like a really small, uncomfortable door that we're having to walk through to get to this really cool big open room. So. Wow. That's amazing. That's and a really cool analogy. Like, it sounds like a lot of people in this chat or this talk can actually relate with uh, being heartbroken and getting suicidal. So there's a common denominator there. But... Um, What's yeah, up? I applaud you for for talking about that. Like about about the, you know, in my 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 scenario and people I've been around, it's always like a, a really deep like, you know, rooted problem. Right. You know, and, and just being able to be like something as simple as a heartbreak, which everyone's yeah. going to go through. Everyone probably already has, or they will. You know, in the whoever's listening or watching this, and like. It's something as simple as that, that someone could feel suicidal and not feel shame to talk about it. I think that's, um, especially for men, I think that's, uh, I applaud you for, for opening up about that because I haven't never heard anyone, and I know it happens because yeah. we've all probably yeah. felt it, but I've never actually heard anyone admit that, uh, and that's, that's beautiful. Thanks, bro. Man. Yeah, I just, I, I'd hug, <laughs> I'd hug yeah, I, I just think that um, <laughs> a lot of people go through, you know, heartbreak and I, again like you said like a lot of men it's like they the world tells us to put on this persona of toughness or like we can't be hurt or heartbroken or whatever and it's actually mm -hmm. most of my friends that have been through heartbreak i don't know if we've handled as well as all the girls in our lives <laughs> so i don't know <laughs> That's right, awesome. right and spencer do you want to go next yeah you you uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think a lot like Mikey here that I, you know, there's not one particular time or like event um, for people who don't know a lot about me. Um, I, I was a drug addict for about 12 years, um, some years worse than other years. Um, and, you know, like. Uh, there's probably a million stories during that time, but I'm going to tell a story that uh, happened after, which I don't think a lot of people, you know, I, I've I've talked to and read a lot about other addicts that have felt suicidal when you're in the thick of it and all this stuff, but I want to tell a story about something that's a little bit different. Um, mine, the, the last time that I was there, it was after the fact, which wow. is super weird because people think, you know, Oh, once you get sober or, you know, you get off whatever you were on or, or you change your lifestyle, it, it's going to get better. And it does get better, but it's not necessarily always 100% easy. It's not like yeah. problems fixed. You know, I'm not sad anymore. I'm not suicidal anymore or whatever. You know, um, it was wild because I was... You know, like, I, I, I got off drugs on my own because I wanted to, and I think that's a really hard place to get to, and I can't believe I made it that far. Like, 12 years is a long time to be using anything. And uh, yeah. getting there and, like, you know, being able to take those steps, because anyone that tried to get me there before, you know, it never works. You know, you, you're hiding it. You're lying to yourself. You're lying to your friends. Like, you're hiding it, and, and that's how I was. And... Um, the last time that I was like really suicidal was I was just having these like complete breakdowns after I, I guess I've been abusing my body for so long. I, I just couldn't balance my highs and lows. So, um, you know, the, the, the darkest of times were when under oath was broken up and I met people like Mikey and some of you guys here, I was in a pretty, pretty bad place, but like as under oath was getting back together, we were starting to write our first record back together so I've got like my passion back and like things are going well and I'm like off drugs for the first time and actually staying off of them. And I was just kept having these like, I would just cry, you know, or just, or just like completely melt down over something simple. 
Sometimes, yeah. some, sometimes it was something, you know, all my feelings really did get hurt or something. It was just something stupid and simple. And I just kept having these really dark suicidal, like I'm going to, I'm, I, I, I can't do this. You know, like I, I can't stay sober because my feelings are too real or whatever that is, whatever that was causing me to like break down like that. Like, like I didn't want to feel that, which is probably why I was using drugs for so long. Cause that's such like a terrible feeling to just not be able to control. And, um, uh, and I just, I, it, the only way I got out of it is cause you know, some of the guys in my band knew what I was going through and, and some didn't for a long time and knew at the end, but not to the extent of Aaron, who's our drummer has been my best friend since I was in my teens. And I just told him I needed help. And, and he said, I've been waiting for you to say that for a decade. Wow. Wow. And he got me help literally the next day. I was in counseling for uh, like substance abuse counseling. And that was really the only thing that, that could bridge the gap for me you know like i got you know i don't recommend everyone take the path that i think everyone's path is different with this stuff and i don't have any answers like i talk to kids all the time on the road and i just i try to share not like preach at them about oh i know because i've been through it but yeah. i don't think that's really the case it's it's such a tricky thing i i managed to get off drugs without help but i couldn't handle it after so amidst all these like I mean, it was months of this, these really weird breakdowns and me attacking my friends and like saying things I probably didn't mean and just like super emotional, yeah. you know, like it was just, I was just all over the place. It was just a mess. And it was like, almost like I was worse off drugs. And I thought about getting back on drugs, you know, it was like, it was just, I just couldn't, just couldn't balance. And I, when I said that, I think I need help. Aaron, that was the first time Aaron was like, I got you. And the next day I had a place to go and someone to talk to and without a friend like that you know i don't think i'd be here today so True. yeah i think being able to talk to someone that you really trust um you know and he was he knew a lot about what i was going through pretty much the whole time but you know there was times where he couldn't really do much about it because i wasn't allowing anyone to help me you know it's like but when i finally got to the point where i was just like dude i can't fucking do anything like i'm just such a mess i can't mm -hmm. have a normal life uh, I need help, and he got me help, and uh, yeah, was, that's changed everything for me. Wow, dude, I, I like that you said that. I like how you right, talked about. Sorry, you go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead, Mikey. I think we're about to say maybe, the same maybe thing. not. I was just gonna say I like that you said that you don't have all the answers because I think a lot of times when when people yeah. make it through something or whatever, it's like people expect them to have some kind of formula or whatever and it's like well no it's just it's just there was somebody there to help pick me up and keep me going a lot of times and like that's the, that's the thing that really pissed me off when you know there was many years you know 12 years is a long time and there was many times where i tried and made attempts to straighten things out and clean myself up and those you know, and I, I'm not like a finger pointer or I blame this or blame that, but like the situ the scenarios I would run into with people like that, that mm -hmm. had all the answers, you know, like, you know, I grew up, you know, like Under Oath was a Christian band for a long time, you know, and like a lot of the scenarios that we were in were people that were X this, X that, but they had all the answers and they were <laughs> talking at you and not necessarily with you and listening yeah. with you. And those things were it was just a huge turnoff for me. And I don't think that that's, that has to be true for everyone though. And I think sometimes people do need to be talked to in different ways. Like we're all different, right? But like for me, it just like, it kind of just pushed me further away. I, I, I guess my journey is just different than other people's, but um, when, and, that, and, it, and I'm not bitter about any of it. I'm, I'm very happy to be here and thankful, you know, and, and, but I try to, use my own self as an example like i think about it a lot of times like especially like when i go on stage like i don't have like a thing that i rehearse to say i don't you know have things that are like oh i know what to say when someone asks me this i didn't even think about what i was going to say when i got on this thing tonight but i i try to think about my experiences and share those because i do think there's people that need the opposite of me and i think there's a lot of people that probably could benefit from hearing what i have to say you know because maybe they're in the similar situation as me which is why I think these things are cool because everyone's got a different story and a different path. And the more that we share, 
our outcomes and our struggles, the easier it is for the younger generation or the older. I mean, maybe people listening are older than us. Anyone who's going down a road that they can hear that they're not alone. And I think that's the biggest thing, you know, is is feeling like you're not alone in in whatever you're going through. And I think that's music, right? That's why we're all so gravitated towards music is growing up. I know for me that was like yeah. the thing. I felt every song that I connected to was yeah. about me when no yep. one else got me, you know, and that's why we're all here. That's why we're all sitting here. That's why we're all how why we've all met or crossed paths, yeah. you know? I like how you said it just you you don't can't rehearse what to say but just to be real about your situation and what happened with you and when you're going through something as real as depression or suicidal tendencies nothing except for a real answer or a real scenario or a real what someone has gone through is going to help you know because you can see right through it especially if the if you get the it's okay i understand it's like you don't understand and and that being real is so important and and uh i never uh i never knew that about you spencer that's 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 crazy that you had aaron there and he said i've been waiting yeah. you know yeah, i've been waiting for cool. you and then actually taking the so steps too. to 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 do that it, yep in the cool thing about it is i don't want to speak for someone else but like he never had drug problems, but he's had his share of other problems with anxiety and different things in his life. And I've had to be that for him. Even when I was fucked up, I had to help him and vice versa. And I think that's just being like <laughs> real with each other. Like, like I, th that was a, that was like a good thing for me is to be around someone who wasn't, wasn't struggling mm -hmm. the way that I was struggling, but struggling in their own way. And I don't know if mm -hmm. that's like, I guess misery likes company and that's a bad thing. But I know that as we were growing up as teens into our early twenties, I could, I could talk to him more because he had his own shit going on that, that I didn't struggle with. So I could kind of be like a stability there of like, uh, no nah, dude, you got this. Like, don't worry about it, blah, 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 blah. And then when I'm breaking down over drugs, you know, he's someone who's never even tried drugs. So he's kid like, you know, he's like sober and like, dude, you could, you know, whatever you can you can lean on me and like i got you you know like it was really good to have um and i know not everyone yeah. has that but in my in my scenario i gotta be honest with that is that you know aaron wasn't you know it wasn't like talking to some like like counselor or you know or like a professional or a, a pastor or or a parent you know he was a peer and equal and super fucked up too just in a different way so your friend you know, yeah, a real friend. So we, we could help each other figure stuff out, um, which was obviously a lifesaver. Or, or at least deal with it together and know right. that you have someone else. I, like hey, you said, I don't want to speak for someone else. But yeah, yeah like yeah. with, I don't want to speak for you, but Shay and I kind of had something similar of, we were both going through our own separate stuff whether it be this or that, and we we had that rebound off of each other, you know, we were able to be in it together, even though we were miserable, even though we felt lonely, and then we knew we could go to one another, you know, and then I think that's now why all these years later, why we still have a relationship, yeah, because right. it wasn't phony, you know, it, it was not always good, it was not always pretty, but it was, you know, it it was real, and then that's that's what brought us to today, you know. And that's like this guy had the key to my house today, and I was gone, and and he, you know, let himself in, and our puppy went to the bathroom on him, <laughs> and you know, I trust him at, at my house, and I've known him since I was, you know, twenty two, so twelve years. Yeah, it's been a while. Shoot. Wow, man, Hell that's. Yeah. That's deep, and thank you for sharing that, Spencer. That's mm -hmm. that's something yeah. for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly that's believe dope. that. And um, Shaylee, do you want to go next? Sure, why not? Um, well, mine actually, Austin was a part of. There's obviously, like like the other one said, like the, it, it's not for some people. It's not just one specific time. It happens. It, it's a gradual thing. Uh, but f for me, the big one was. I was on tour with the Mice and Men, struggling with my alcoholism. A uh, little backstory of why I became an alcoholic is, well, one, 
it's basically what I grew up with, you know, my dad drinking a lot, you know, um, so it's kind of all I knew. But it, I, I got a back injury that changed my life, like, overnight, and uh, mm. I live in severe pain, like, um, still to this day. And the only way to get rid of it was to drink. And then the, with the pain came the lack of confidence, which, which also brought insecurities, and getting on stage and performing became daunting and terrifying. So mm. drinking was my mm. cure. That was it. That was my, my drug of choice. I've never done any other drug other than that. And I pounded it down more than anyone should. You know, I had a handle under my pillow. I'd wake up at three in the morning, take four swigs, pass out, start over throughout the day, mm. you know. So it was a nightmare. And what it did to my mind was worse than the pain was doing to my mind. And, uh, you know, one, one evening we had a off day in, what was it, my, uh, Florida? Yep. Yeah, by uh, Disneyland. And Orlando. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We were by the resort, and I was having a good day. You know, when you're drunk is good. And then, the com you know, the come down happens, and I just got in my head. And, you know, I've been struggling this for a long time. They know what's going on. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm hanging on by a thread. You yeah, know, every, barely being... Everybody left, huh? I, I stayed at the hotel with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it was just really... It was getting really bad, so I decided to call a hotline and, you know, completely wasted out of my mind... Somehow they got the information of where I was, and where I was at, and they found me. And uh, Austin comes running out. Nobody knows what's going on, mind you. I'm just doing all this. I don't want anybody to know, obviously. I just wanted to get help. I just didn't know what it was because I really felt at that time, I was like, I can't live like this. If I'm in severe pain, I hate what I love now. Um, I don't even know who I am. You know, I can't even remember yesterday. What is this life, you know? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so they, they got me. Austin comes running out. He doesn't know what's going on. He starts fighting them pretty much. He gets arrested. I'm like, oh, tackle the cop, a police officer. <laughs> oh, my god. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> this was supposed to be my special day. <laughs> this was supposed to be my special day. Um, so they end up taking me away. Or they, were in a, they were about to not take me away. And then they asked me the, the, a trick question. They're like, so you're not going to kill yourself or anything? I said, no. I just need some help, and you guys came here and made me chill. They're like, well, if you were to kill yourself, what would you do? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I guess I'd jump off that building. They're like, come with us. I'm like, great. Now I'm going to the Cuckoo Lounge. So I went to the Cuckoo Lounge for a couple of days and got out, flew home, and that was the start of, like, uh, going in the right direction. But, you know, it took me years and years still after that to, to fully get through the, the suicidal thoughts. And, you know, the first thing was, was ditching the alcohol. You know, that, that is not going to help any type of substance that makes you happy and, and forces you to not work on those tools you need to cope with these feelings is your enemy, you know, whether you have a fun time or not. I'm um, like what Spencer was saying, uh, you know, when you, when you did kick the drugs, you know, it got worse emotionally. And, you know, t what I have to say to that, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, your drug addiction suppressing all your emotions for years, mm -hmm. everything that you didn't want to feel. You push it down, you push it down, and then you stop. And where are all those, where are all those emotions going to go? They're going to resurface, and you can't handle them because you haven't built those tools. So, yeah, when I, when I quit drinking as well, it got even harder because what the hell? The, the thing that you usually run to to get through these times, you can't have. But, you know, you make a promise, promise with yourself like I did, like Spencer did. I just woke up one day, and I was like, I am done. I'm tired of yeah, same, same. embarrassing myself. I'm tired of ruining relationships, and I should be an example. I'm on tour with all these people that look up to me at the time, and they're younger than me, and they're looking at, you know, and I don't take this egotistical, but they're looking at their leader as a phony, you know? Like, I can't be that guy. That just killed me inside. So I'm like, you know what? I'm done with this. I don't care how long it's going to take. I don't care how bad the pain in my back's going to be. I'd rather die with my pride than a piece of crap drunk you know or something you know but yeah there's my story guys <laughs> wow. Dude, I, I, so that story about austin tackling a police officer goodness sorry that took me off guard our old tour manager <laughs> our old tour manager came to my house last year and went swimming and we were just chatting and he reminded me of that and i kind of had forgotten about it because i was drunk as well i was like like spencer was saying aaron was going through his own stuff i was an alcoholic 
Well, I wasn't an alcoholic. I just drank mm. every day. You know, you're like, an alcoholic. Yeah, I, I, I know. So, so, so um, that that reminded me of that story, and I. Um, watching you go through that you know and having to be the bad guy at one point in time was the hardest hardest thing i've ever done because i have you know when you left i tried to get a hold of parents and things and i don't want to dive into that story but it was hard for me because here's my best friend here's the only reason the band is good for that first record, <laughs> I mean, I don't. That, that's not saying anything, but his, you know, my voice is Spencer. I do a vocal fry, the same tone, the whole album, you know. And Shaylee <laughs> has his his voice, and yeah, I had cool lyrics in my story because I was suicidal and depressed, and I still battle. You know, depression is still something that mm -hmm. I have to consciously battle, and I have to consciously, I I have to give it to God, or it's going to get me, and and. Um, It was a tough time, dude. It was it was hard. I mean, I get it. Like that's what I was saying. The guilt, you know, just letting all your boys down over and over. I mean, I just that shame that hang hung on me led me to be more suicidal, you know. And that's the thing is that the things that we use to cope always make what we're trying to cope with worse. Right. Mm -hmm. And they go back and forth, and it's like this this endless mm -hmm. cycle. Like Vicious. for mine, like I relate to Spencer, your story. Mikey, your story of, you know, heartbreak. I have journals from when I was 16 that, you know, I was listening to too much Under Oath and Hidden in Plain View. And, you know, every girl that broke up with me, I, you know. You Copeland? Know, huh? Copeland? Copeland. Yeah, you got to pop But that in. it gets to that point where you, you write about it or you do little cuts right. on your arm for attention to actually getting there. And I had, you know, a little bit of, all of y'all's story and mine too was my my depression came from from having to look in the mirror and having to know that I was who I was and I didn't want to be that person and that I was always looking for the next step I said that today I was always looking towards the future instead of like living in the present moment because I didn't want to be in the present moment because mm -hmm. I was so depressed and sad and I had all these coping mechanisms and at first it was you know sex and then it was alcohol marijuana and then it became like uh, op opioids like really really like uh, heavy opioids like oxycotton the worst the, that hardest kind of thing like that because I have you know I have something called Marfan syndrome so I'm in pain daily but I use that as an excuse to uh, to just constantly get these Mm -hmm. you know medicines and I would use them how I was supposed to and some and when you do that like Shaley said Spencer said you guys hit it on nail on the head is your brain doesn't know how to cope without it and then so like Spencer when you stopped it got worse mm -hmm. and like it's like like withdrawals like during the last of my cement album I was stopping the oxycotton and I was having withdrawals while we were recording an album so i'd be throwing up all night shaking sweating i'd be mm -hmm. going to therapy and uh once and then going to the studio and recording and one time i couldn't even get to the studio because i was driving back from physical therapy and my withdrawals were so bad that i couldn't drive mm -hmm. and i had to call valentino our drummer and him and alan had to come get me and it's like i was doing that while you know we my old my guitar player alan did what a good friend should do. He said, oh, we shouldn't even be here right now. We shouldn't even be recording. And he left. He straight flew from Jersey, went back. Wow. It's like, well, like he needs a break, you know? And, and it's mm -hmm. always when someone does something hard or that other people don't like or what you don't want to hear, that helps so much, especially when it's the right thing. Tough love sometimes. You know? Tough love. <clears throat> and, and it's like, you know, I'm not, I can't love you and not give you the truth. And I can't give you the truth without doing it in love either. And and it's it's crazy that cycle because it just keeps going on and on and on. You just try to fill yourself up 
with all these different things that just leave you empty. And then you got to fill yourself up again. Mm -hmm. Like you said, waking up at 3 a.m. in the morning or, you know, another chick or another girlfriend or, you know, whatever it may be. I've noticed, um, I don't mean to cut you off at all, but I've just noticed like what you just said about somebody helping you and going home because you needed a break. Something that I feel like every single one of us has said is that there was somebody that was there for us. And that's something I would want to reiterate to anybody listening is that find that person that you can trust to talk to. And if you don't have one, find one. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to go about that exactly. I don't have all the answers, but Dude, there's plenty of like, yeah, and, yeah, and totally therapists and, and any sort. Yeah. Like if you don't have someone the way that we're sharing these stories, you know, it's rare because we're all, you know, in bands, you know, that's not, necessarily everyone's mm -hmm. life you know you, you're stuck you get close to the people even if you don't right. want to <laughs> yeah. but like yeah like to to you know someone who's just going to school every day or or whatever it's like if you don't have someone to talk to there there are those people like like in my scenario i had aaron the whole time but what really got me there was it was a complete stranger you know when i went and got Real that's a good point dude i wasn't even yeah i wasn't even thinking yeah. like that because i was thinking we all knew these it, people it, but yes yeah. That's totally. We do, but we and we all had someone, you know. Like I wouldn't have been able to get to that if I didn't have someone to talk to about yeah. getting there. But I think that's the stigma that needs to be lifted from all this. It's like yep. not being scared to to ask for help, and that's something that I was saying on stage for a long time until <laughs> until I got my feelings hurt. From the it's a whole other story. But like I used to, I was sharing on the whole last album cycle. Um, not necessarily, like I said, I didn't rehearse anything, so a lot of times I'd say the wrong things, but I tried to make it clear that, like, I mean, yes, I'm up here, and I, it's because I worked my whole life for this, not because I'm better than anyone that's in the crowd. You know, there's probably tons of people out in the crowd that are more talented than I am. I just busted my ass to get here and never gave up. So if a normal person like me can be up here, and a normal person like me can just ask for help. Anyone can, because I think sometimes put, people put us on such a pedestal. All of yeah. all, everyone on on this panel right now has been put there to where it's like, if you buy your own shit and you act like you're the man, yeah, that you know that doesn't really help the the outcome. You know, I think yes, we all put on that pers a persona yeah. on stage and you command an audience and you you doing your thing, but like. I try to break it down at least one point in every night to just be like, we're just normal dudes, you know, we're just regular ass people, no better than anyone in this room. And if we can do it, you can do it. Yeah. You know, like anyone could, could ask for help and, and get there and get through whatever they're in right now, whatever it is right now, it can get better. Like you just got to, ask for it you know just gotta you gotta ask for help if that's your friend if that's your mom if that's your neighbor if that's a complete stranger walking down the road it's it's just a conversation and that conversation is fucking scary but yeah. once you get in it it yeah. is it, it it's better than any drug you've ever done because it takes away so much of that right. weight you know like there's just too much weight for a person to individually hold and when you share that burden with someone, it almost feels like they're yeah. taking it from you. And all they're doing is listening. And, yeah. and, and it might be it might be so, easier yeah, for yeah. somebody too, just to you know, if you call a hotline or, or something like a local therapist or whatever, them not knowing you might be easier because you can kind of step out. I know for me, and again, I'm I'm no I'm in the smallest band on this whole thing, but it was easier for me. In in hey, I'm <laughs> in the band, it was easier, but it was easier for me to find somebody you know that had never heard of us or anything like that so i could completely share my story aside from you know them saying like oh what do you do for work it's like i like that i like that question and it's easier to speak to somebody sometimes when they don't know every detail of your life so maybe it is anybody listening you know talk to somebody that that you don't know and they can they can hear you from an outsider's perspective um, on things maybe without judging you in that way. Right, yeah, because I that's... couldn't even... Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Spencer. I, like, w from mm -hmm. what you were just saying, Mikey, I couldn't even imagine going to my parents. Mm -hmm. You know, you you said, you, yeah, was, was it your mom. mom or was it your dad? It was your mom? 
Yeah, like that. That. So anyone who feels opposite, like that's where I I could never do that. Like that would have that would have crushed me. You know, right. like, I don't think you I could have possibly done. Talk about the fear. It. That fear yeah. of doing it, and that fear of asking someone, it is what so many times keeps people because you know, like, like it's embarrassing when someone when someone that actually goes through and takes their life. It's the people you never would mm -hmm. expect. It's the people that smile, the people that look like they have it together, or have you know all the things that the world says is going to make you happy, and it comes out of nowhere and. Right now, within this past two weeks since school started, we've had at least a dozen stories of kids that have taken their lives already Whoa. because the school year started. Because there's that juggle of summer's over and now you're back with all these kids. You know, you're getting bullied, you're getting this or, you know, whatever it is. And so you have that fear of isolation and then also that fear of opening up and then that fear of being wanted and loved and accepted and so many kids and me even you have this fear of being accepted that you don't accept anyone yourself and you push everyone away and then that's just leads to that vicious cycle again and when you're young man like spencer you were talking about when when you were younger i snuck into one of your shows when i was a sophomore in high school in denver colorado and you were wearing a purple hoodie <laughs> and I snuck oh, wow. in and it was like the early November, you guys hopes fall. But I, I snuck in and I did that because some of the guys on the line went to my school and they picked on me all the time oh. and I didn't want them to see me there. Sure. And, and then, but all these years later, one of their names is Jordan and one of their names is Corey. They broke two of my ribs. They got in a fight. But <laughs> all these years later, we played in Vesco field so Colorado when I was young and then in Vesco field and I see those dudes in the crowd and they're watching. And so it brings out that what you said that we're just normal dudes. We are, but we worked for it. And, and that's that space you're living in right now. That's not permanent mm -hmm. taking your life. Like Mikey's mom said, that's mm -hmm. permanent. You're done. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's no other option. There's no other chance. And you know, when I was, a teenager, I thought I knew everything. I thought I had it all together. When I was early 20s, I thought I had everything. I thought, I, early 30s, I thought I had everything. Then once I got married, whoa, I know nothing. Once I had kids, whoa, I know nothing. And it's mm -hmm. like the more you grow and the older you get, and I know it sounds cliche, but it's like you see that, like, like I also talk about myself, like what an ignorant little mm -hmm. kid. Like mm -hmm. what a, what a dummy. You know, and I wish someone would have come alongside me like you, Spencer, or my mom would have, you know, said something like that, Mikey, but I kept it in and I kept it in. I kept it in. And then my mom died. And when my mom, my mom died, I was a junior in high school and I was, you know, like kind of like Spencer was saying, I was raised in church, you know, all this stuff. I was a you know good little Christian kid. My mom died. I ran out of the hospital and I f said the F word for the first time to God. And I went berserk the next whole mm. week. I went berserk. And then, then I saw that this is real depression, but it, it was masked in anger and fear. And underneath all of that was just hurt and mm. just wanting someone to be there and someone to come alongside of me. Wow. Mm. Oh, that's man. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, yeah, that's 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 it's heavy stuff. And it, and you're right though. It's like taking your own life, you know, it it doesn't fix anything. Mm -hmm. You know, all, all you're going to do is leave a hole in the people that care for you. And, the, and there's people that don't even know you that care for you. You know, especially in people like our situation, it's like taking your own life fixes nothing. It just hurts the others the way that you are hurting you know like mm -hmm. you're gonna hurt the people that love you yeah as hard as you're hurting right now so like asking for help and sticking around to you know like like i couldn't even imagine like i have a daughter now and you're you're talking about the kids going to school and all this stuff and i'm sitting here worried about like what's it going to be like when she goes to school like will she get bullied will she go through this but 
I'm so fucking glad that I'm here that where hopefully I can be someone that you can mm-hmm. talk to about it, you know, because I, by me being honest about all this stuff, am I going to be a little embarrassed when she watches or hears some of this stuff later in life? Maybe, maybe, and, that, and that's okay. And I, but because yeah. I think I'd rather be embarrassed and help one person than hold it in mm-hmm. and help nobody, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think anyone listening that's, that's dealing with depression or suicidal thoughts or addiction is like, you don't have to be a singer in a band to help other people by mm-hmm. getting help. You could, you could be helping your next door neighbor. You can help your cousin. You can help just friends in your circle. Yeah. You know, by talking to them or, or like when, you know, like we get to write songs about it and that's our outlet and, and sing about it and, and share our stories with people on stuff like this and in, on stages and, so on and so forth, but like you don't just because you're not doing that doesn't mean right. anything. Like, yeah, my, my mom's a not fan in the band too. Being a fan of this music, yeah, my mom's not <laughs> in the band. Neither is mine. My being a fan of music like ours, you know, rock music, real music, music from the heart. Like we wrote about what we were going through. We wrote about how we were feeling. And that's how we find those people that are going through the same things, mm-hmm, right. you know, like that, that I have a song about my mom and that's like the band's, you know, top song on Spotify to this day. And it's like that situation, you know, was used all these years later for me to connect with people that deal with the exact same thing. And I'm not on tour, not, you know, this and that. And, and especially like for people listening, like, go to a show, go get it out, go, go try to yell as loud as Mikey and jump off his same kind of stuff that he does. Don't try to yell. Be careful with your knees though. I've learned that. (laughs) But dude, that's the most. (laughs) Same. Mine are too. You find, you find people that can relate. And sometimes that is bad. Don't listen to Slipknot if you have anger issues. I learned that the hard way. You know, there, you know, don't listen to depressing music if you're depressed. Sometimes it helps. Sometimes it doesn't. But but being able to share with someone that understands is so beneficial, even if it's briefly. Because like Spencer said, that weight is lifted. Mm-hmm. I think I, I wanted to add. I think it's important too. You know you guys were talking about where to get help you know and there's some people prefer someone not knowing who they are at all to start over some people want somebody they know but i think the other side of the coin is you know don't give up on the people you love of the people that aren't struggling with suicidal thoughts or depression or whatnot the people that are healthy don't give up on those people and i say this why because i kind of feel a sense of guilt that hangs over me when i first started music i was in this band called covet just some kids from Lake Elsinore, California, trying to make a big, trying to be the next under oath, some would say. Um, But, uh, you know, he was a troubled person as we grew up and then life took us in different directions. I joined him my cement and then on to day shell. Long story short, you know, he ended up taking his own life a few years ago. And when it it happened, I, I didn't really know how to feel because we haven't really kept in contact for years. But as time went on these past few years, you know, it'll cross my mind and I kind of do feel guilty because I knew I I knew deep down inside something bad was going to happen to him sometimes because of where his head was at. And I I personally got sick of it and just didn't want anything to do with them anymore. And so this kind of like guilt that hangs over me subtly, you know, you know, like I said, don't give up on the ones you love. Like you got to be there for them. I know in certain there's certain situations and circumstances where you're in an abusive relationship and you just got to get out of it. You don't care at what his mental health is because now your mental health, mental health is in jeopardy. I understand those situations, but if it's your homie, like I know he's going to keep messing up. He's going to keep, keep messing up, but just be there for him. Don't enable him, but be there for him forever, man. Mm-hmm. Cause one day he, he, when everybody gives up on him, you know, that's, it's either it go to me. This is how it goes. When everybody, everyone quits on an addict, it goes one of two ways. One way they kill themselves. The second way, they finally understand that they need to make change now because they've lost everything. For me, that was kind of like where I was at. You know, I pretty much lost it all. Left of my cement, started my new band, tried that, still being an alcoholic, and I lost it, basically almost lost it all. And overnight, made that change. I knew it was going to be a hard road. Even to this day, you know, depression, 
anxiety, suicidal thoughts, they don't go nowhere. They're always going to be there. They're always going to be in the back of your mind. It's just a, a matter of building a healthy routine and a goal. You know, my, my big end goal is to leave this planet a better place, however that is, or just leave a legacy of, to make people happy, whether it's through my music or just my company, you know? But yeah, yeah. just wanted yeah, to add that. I like how you, you said that you, the, it could go one way or another, you know, and, and how especially when people realize that their people have had to turn away, you know, because of what they're going through or because of like, say addiction, it's those times, like, even if you don't can't be around the person or whatever, that's still something that they reach out, you reach back, Yeah, you know? And, yeah. and it takes, it takes a big man to admit those things. And it also, I think it takes a bigger man to be there for people, even people that don't, he doesn't like, or don't like you because of the lasting thing that, that, that that is, you know, taking your life. Like if, if someone was to come, someone has, people have come to me that have slandered mm -hmm. me and I'm there because, because the truth is the truth. And it's like, I see you're hurting and I know it's cliche, but hurting people hurt people. <laughs> And it's like hurting people hurt other people or hurt themselves. And that's what it made, that made me think of that when you said mm -hmm. it could go both ways. You know, my, my cousins, Ryan and Ross, my uncle was a raging alcoholic. He got out of the hospital after a liver, like transfusion or something. And we found him dead in a grocery store parking lot with a bottle the day he got out of the hospital. And then my, one of my cousins, he therefore be imitators. He, he said, I, I never want to drink ever, ever because of my dad. And he's in the air force. Now he has like 13 kids, a beautiful wife. You know, he became an ordained pastor. He, he does all these things and he doesn't drink because of his dad. Cause he saw that example, his dad set. And then my other cousin, was an alcoholic early, he, alco uh, alcoholic early because his dad, he said he blamed it on his dad. Well, you know, it's my dad drinks and I get the genes from my dad. So he mm -hmm. kind of let his dad take the responsibility. And there comes a time when you got to take responsibility for you. You are not mm -hmm. a little boy. And he blamed it on his dad and he ended up becoming involved with drugs, heroin, the wrong crowd. And it was a few Christmases back. He passed out in the snow outside and he lost half of his foot from frostbite mm -hmm. because he was on heroin and drunk. And then a few weeks later, he was found dead in his apartment. And they don't know if it was a suicide or a involved with the wrong people. And it was, but that was two people, two completely separate directions mm -hmm. because of their dad, because of that figure. And, and, that example is what what so many kids are lacking, whether it be a father figure, you know, a good teacher, a parent, whatever it is, they can see a bad parent, they can see a bad teacher. A lot of kids nowadays are they live in bad, broken homes. And homes right now are wrecked. But just because your home is wrecked, that doesn't mean look at your home and then just kind of slouch back and be like, This is what I have to expect from my life. Like, no, take that and say, I want to do better than that because they suck. Because I know exactly what that's like too. And and I think a lot of kids need that encouragement because homes today are just so, you see it, you know, and, and it goes without saying, but that that example is, is you are not your parent mm -hmm. in the good way and a bad way. You are you, you're uniquely created, you're created for a purpose, you're created for a reason, you're created for exactly where you are right now. Don't take that. Mm -hmm. Some something Don't I agree that. with everything you're saying because um, something that helped me a lot with things that I may have been upset at with my my family or my dad or whatever growing up, 
the older I've gotten and I've had to make hard decisions or mistakes or whatever, I started realizing that, you know, now that I'm the age that my dad was when I remember him when I was little or whatever, it's like I can relabel it and be like, wow, like he was a human being that was coming home from rough days at work or whatever. And he was making, you know, whether it be a mistake or, you know, something good, it was like, I had to realize he was a human being that was trying the best he could sometimes. And I needed to forgive him for the things that I thought that were just like purposeful or whatever. And I'm like, now I look at it and I'm like, wow, you were dealing with your own mental health. You were dealing with your own struggles at work that you weren't going to tell some six year old kid about. And it's like my, my mindset kind of changed into, you know, wow. Like if I'm struggling like this and I don't even have a kid, I can't imagine how hard it must have been being a parent. And I've had to relabel a lot of that and do a lot of forgiving. So. 100%. Not saying with everything, you know. With all of these you know. stories shared. <laughs> <laughs> and with all of these stories shared tonight, if there were one thing that you could leave people with to help them choose to live tonight, what would that be? We'll start with you, Mikey. Oh, man, me again, starting it out. <laughs> um there's an opportunity tomorrow i don't i don't know you know what that is but and we're not promised tomorrow in the sense of you know i could go get in my car and get ice cream tonight and die on the way there or back but i just want people to know that when we choose to stick around we choose a different um a different possibility for things to get better and if we don't stick around then Again, like Spencer was saying earlier, there there is no chance for things to get better. It's just, yeah, it's not worth it. Even though being alive is hard, I believe it's worth it. Yeah, I, I can second that. With with uh, it, if I were to leave one thing here for, you know, is that take it one day at a time. It's like mm -hmm. a, you know, like. Shay said, Austin said, I think everyone said it. it's like, it doesn't necessarily just go away, you know, like the depression, you know, dark thoughts and struggles, you know, there's, there's been days, uh, six something, seven years off, you know, substance abuse it, that you're like, fuck this, you know, like I want to, I want to get high, you know, in, in it, and you got to fight it. But I, I think when I used to front load everything of like, well, if I stop now, I'm at age whatever, and I'll be in a good spot by this age. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I, I always failed. So I think, yeah. you know, when I made that decision, it was just like Shay said, is like, I just woke up one day, and he's like, you know what, I'm sick of who I am right now. Whatever this is, I don't like. Whatever I feel right now, I'm done with it. I got into the end of my road, and it wasn't going to be suicide that day. It was going to be, I want to feel better. And I was starting, it was like, it started with a little thing like eating better and joining a gym and, you know, getting out of a toxic relationship and, and being single for a while and just working on me and, and just, and trying to enjoy little things and taking it one little step at a time, like one day at a time, like not, you know, thinking that your depression or your anxiety or your addictions are going to be fixed like that. You know, it's a struggle every uh, day. You're right. I think it's a struggle even even after yeah. you're you're doing yeah. better. It's like you have to wake up and keep making those decisions. You're right. Right, right. But it it's is. so worth it. <laughs> it's so it's so worth it in many 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 ways. Like I've had the best times of my life since, and even in the hard dark times, it's like it's so worth it. Like I, now, now I'm looking like last week my daughter mm -hmm. turned one, and if you would have told <laughs> me two years ago that I would ever have a kid, I would have laughed at you, you know, and five years before that, you know, and it's the best, it, you know, it's love, true love. It's like the best thing that's ever happened. And, and there's so many other countless things that every day can bring these opportunities of, of, of just better times. I don't know. It's, it sounds cheesy, but, um, mm. yeah, I think taking stuff just one, one day at yeah. a time, man, it's like, that's the best you, you can do. And it's just work on right now. Austin. What's your words of wisdom? What? Words of wisdom? Words of wisdom? 
I, I, uh, d- 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 Mikey, you have a song in the darkness. <laughs> the, yeah. The, for, for me personally, like, like Spencer said, you don't want someone preaching at you. You want someone talking to you and listening to you and coming alongside of you. For me, like, you know, I was raised in church and then I hated God. I hated him. I want nothing to do with him. But And I also didn't want anything to do with him because I saw lots of bad examples of Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw these people that claimed to be about Jesus, but they didn't live like that. And that pissed me off. Like, that still makes me very upset. And that goes back to, like, how I said about, you know, my cousins and their dad. You don't look to other people and say that's what that is you know that's exactly what it looks like and if i do this i'm going to be just like that because that person doesn't have it all together you know and and you know a true christian should have a sign around their neck that says under construction anyways because you know like like mikey you and i like i have to give all of these things we're talking about to god because the, the that depression can just come, it slides back in, or I get let down, or something happens, and I have to give it to him. And then, like Spencer said, I never wanted to be married ever. I never wanted kids. I didn't even think I could have kids. I don't have my syndrome. But I'm so thankful that I didn't just look at other Christians and say that's them I don't want to be like them I experienced it on my own and when I experienced it on my own it led me to where I am now in life it led me to my wife it led me to my girls and just like Spencer said like I have never had this much joy in my entire life as you know singing in front of 50,000 people and touring with you know Lincoln Park and doing all these things I have joy just from watching my daughter say yellow yellow and it's like mm-hmm. that is that comes because i know all of the things that i went through to get there mm-hmm. and and that's what just like shay said i want to leave the world a better place but i have to do that by example and i think that so many people do look up to singers musicians etc and if we are in a position like that you could be a Christian, atheist, you could be whatever you want, but you have, you're an example, and that's a responsibility. It's like Peter mm-hmm. Parker, like with great power comes great responsibility, mm-hmm. and I think this newer generation of artists coming up need to really take that seriously because those kids listening take, take them seriously. And yeah. Spencer, you hit it on the head. We are just normal dudes. We are no better than you. And I think it takes a lot of humility. We need a lot more humility in men like that to be like, I'm no better than you. And I struggle too. So let's go. Let's go. Stop staying there. Don't sit there and saturate it and saturate in the sadness and saturate in the people that are toxic that want to just, oh, you're sad or this. And they just want to pour onto it. No, let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And Shay, mm. I lost audio. I did too, but I think yeah, I, I heard every single thing. <laughs> I, I yeah, I, yeah, it was yeah. great. Okay, and Shay, you want Shay to go? I can't hear anything. Uh, yeah, I'll go. Uh, well, my, I guess, what I would have to say is, obviously, I agree with everything everyone's saying. Um, but I don't know if some there's some situations where you're not enough to make the change, you know. And I say this because it was kind of like that kind of helped me as well in my journey of getting better mental health is, you know, I I took a look at my nephews. One time they walked in and I was going through one of my alcohol poisoning binge things, you know, seizures, throwing up, uh, just not a good time. And they came in and I I was obviously just all whacked out. And I, you know, I yelled at them to get out because I I just didn't want to see anything. But I could see in their faces the... I don't know how to explain it, but they just seemed so disappointed in me, so hurt by that. Mm. And then I, that, that was one of the reasons, like, if I'm not going to do it for myself, because I'm weak, I'm going to do it for these 
kids that need an uncle, that need somebody to look up to, an example uh, in this screwed up world we live in, you know, and they think I'm a superhero. So what, what am I now? I'm a, I'm a nothing. So that, that was a huge thing. So if it's not for you, it's for yourself. You know, surrender yourself to the truth that it is. You're messed up. You're hurting. You're not just hurting yourself. You're hurting everyone else by hurting. You know, take that step. You know, take it day by day, like you guys said. Make those steps and, you know, it's, it's never, it's not an easy road. It's not supposed to be. That's how you build. That's how you get yeah. strong, you know. You don't just lift weights and get buff. You got to work yeah. out every day. <laughs> That's true. It's, it's the same thing with the mind. Yep. Good point. Do that. Hell yeah. When you go through trials, it creates perseverance in you and endurance in you. And then that creates character. And then when your character gets built, it, it creates hope. Yeah. And there's hope that doesn't put us to shame. And that hope is worth searching for. And um, I love that all four of you guys, three of you guys, you 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 all if you would you could have just you you just yeah, awesome. <laughs> you, Say you, that again. You could be a pastor if you. Uh, <laughs> this face? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh come on, yeah, let's see it. My vocabulary is pretty bad. I don't know. Oh yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Hulk Hogan could bring and some words of wisdom. If, <laughs> if you were to end this with someone struggling tonight, if you could communicate one song from your discography to them to help them through the hard time they're experiencing, oh what would it be? <laughs> uh, I know what we should choose together. Oh, Pro- product. Really? What? Product. Oh, man. Well, that's, there's like, we, all of our songs are about depression and suicide. It's sad. We're just emo boys. That's an impossible question to answer. You, this... really, you really threw us a curveball <laughs> here. There well, you go. Uh, what, which you said, product of a murderer, right? Yeah, because you know the bridge. This is the way I wanted to live. So, so the 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 song we have is uh, it's called product product of a murderer, and it's a uh, it's a banger. It's on my favorite album, uh, and it's a uh, product of a murderer. You stole everything from me. Yeah. You're talking about poison in your veins, numbing yourself. This never-ending cycle. You hate yourself because of all these reasons but then the bridge which is where the song changes is this this is the way the I want li- I wanted to live I want to live but you know I was scared of the world praying it all would go away but you know that I was scared of the world praying it all would go away it's like a what would you call that line like a false representation of yourself no that's a that that i mean that was a truth for me no, I, was, I mean this like, is the way i wanted to oh, live oh no, yeah because you didn't want to you thought you wanted to live that way and i was but i was scared of the world yeah. and i was praying it all go away but it doesn't go away mm-hmm. so if you remove yourself from that equation you just go away yep wow something like that i was okay My <laughs> <from> singing <laughs> Um, for me, I've got two that, that just came to mind. I'll do it real quick. But uh, the song, What Do You Gotta Lose? Um, it's about um, suicide. And the chorus is, take back the years that you've wasted. Um, it, somebody commented one time to us and said, hey, like, you can't take years back. And I said, yeah, but you can redeem them. Look at Darth Vader. And it's Ooh. the idea that, you know, I know that you can't go back in time, <laughs> but you can redeem you can redeem now and you can say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to start fresh. And, um, the other one is, uh, our new single uh, actually the video drops tomorrow. I'm not trying to plug it right now. I promise. But, um, Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a song we did called it's not easy being human, uh, featuring Lacey Sturm. And it just keeps saying it's not easy being human. And on the bridge, she just keeps saying, have grace and mercy on me because I feel like, um, the world we live in right now doesn't really give people room to to mess up and and come back for it. We just cancel people, and I just I just know for me, you know, I if if my mom had canceled me, she wouldn't have been able to talk to me about sticking around. So I don't think we can really, you know, encourage people to stick around unless we're willing to not cancel them as well. So because canceling them is basically just telling them, 
you know, we're just going to go ahead and commit suicide for you. you we're going to kill you. And it's like, I don't, yep. I don't want to be like that. I want to have grace and mercy on people and, and believe they can change, not believe that, you know, like going deeper. So I'm a, I'm a true crime kind of guy. So I watch a lot of crazy stories and stuff. And, you know, I believe people, people um, deserve certain things for their actions. They have consequences and justice needs to prevail. But I think that if we don't also forgive people along with that, um, you know, we're, we're not, we're not um, giving true justice. So we need to forgive people so that we can be okay with ourselves. And how are we supposed to forgive ourselves if we can't right. forgive others? Or forgive others yeah. if we can't forgive ourselves, and that's a big, uh, yep. that's a whole thing right there. <laughs> yeah. Mm. How about you, Spencer? Spencer. Oh man, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know where to start. <laughs> like all the all the songs are so dark, and they're like, I mean, most of my songs, I'm like admitting that I'm not where I want to be, and I'm not perfect. I'm like kind of spelling out in the darkest of places, like. There's a song on our new record called I'm Pretty Sure I'm Out of Luck and Have No Friends. And like the song title kind of says it's all, says it all. Like It was a moment when I was like close to death. And the song takes place in as long as the song is. Like There's like the blackout, taking too much drugs, and waking up alone. Like at the beginning of the song, I'm like calling 911 and scared wow. and hanging up because I don't want to, you know, in, in the situation... And I've never written a song that the lyrics take place like the song is like four minutes long, and the the story is it not like over the span of like most songs I write about is like a long you know thing of like how I've been feeling for a while, and that song's actually like supposed to take place as long as the song is, and when the music when the vocals drop out and there's all these weird sounds, it's actually vocoders that me and Aaron used. It's kind of simulating what it felt like to black out, mm -hmm. you know, of like close to overdose kind of feeling in that and like there's not really much hope in that song i mean but it, it's just the like the truth of like being there like like living through it and coming out the other end of being like i don't want to ever be there again so i write a song about it so if someone's ever there they know that they're not the only one that's right. kind of crossed that bridge um and there's a song called a fault line a fault of mine that was on uh, Lost in the Sound of Separation. Sound of Separation. Oh, yeah. Love that album. And that, that, I was in the, that was like the pre Under Oath breakup, probably one of the darker times until the breakup. That was a really hard year. We were really like rifted as a band and fighting a lot, not getting along. And that song is basically just waving a white flag of defeat within mm. yourself of like, you're, you're, the, the lyrics are pretty dark, but at the end, I'm saying this is defeat because I'm like surrendering to myself. I'm like, like I'm admitting that I was lying about all the shit that I've been telling people about being better and you know being this leader of the spiritual leader even and like doing all this stuff of like heading in the right direction, but really I wasn't. And that song is just kind of like a surrender. Um, the only song I really have that's got more of a positive outlook is is my solo stuff that's not even really out yet. I've got one song out called Neck High, and, I, and literally the chorus says, Lord, I know I'll get by even when it's neck high. And I, when I write for my solo stuff, um, I come. I wanted to use a different part of my brain. You know, I wanted to use something that was, like, lyrically, you know, Under Oath is, like, the dark stuff that I go through, and, and Slow Tide is more of, like, a... I don't know, just the other side of my brain. I don't I know think, how to, to explain it, but I've, I've written more more songs about, like... I was going to say, Spencer, I don't mean to it, cut you it, off. It, I was just going to say throughout those dark songs, I feel like those songs alone just let people know that they're not alone. Like, that's what a lot of, I feel like, Korn's lyrics do as well. Like, they, there's things that make people right. know. It's like, wow, I'm, there's somebody else going through it, and they're still here. So that's, that's a big point right there. So. Yeah. Th th I think that's the unspoken thing about under oath that like every song is kind of that it's supposed to be like, cause that's how I, that's how I felt mm -hmm. growing up, you know, really relating to Nirvana and corn and sound garden, Alice and chains, all the stuff that we grew up, Deftones, all that stuff, you know, a lot of those songs, you felt like it was about you. I kind of said that earlier is that's <laughs> like hearing that someone else is in that mm -hmm. shitty place. And obviously they've sit, sang about it and they're out the other end of it, or at least, 
long enough to get the song out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, I think that's Under Oath's thing has always been writing the stuff that it, a lot of times I was too scared to tell my mm-hmm. friends. Yeah. You know, and I think stuff. that is the therapy. Yeah, it's the therapeutic thing about music, and that's why we're lucky, you know. And I, I, that's why I like doing these panels and stuff that talks about mental health is because not everyone is as lucky as me because I get to have that. I, you know, like we said earlier, we all worked our ass off to get where we are, but, like, to be able to have that release, not everyone gets that release. So doing stuff like this and being honest and sharing your story does a lot for people that can't write a song about it and sing it in front of people because, like, that to me is their therapy mm-hmm. every night on stage is therapy yeah. every yeah. song i write in the studio is therapy you know going to therapy is therapy but then but i think about the people that don't have that you know like what about the kid that can't afford to go to therapy what about the kid that's mm-hmm. not a songwriter or, or you know all that stuff is like i try to talk about this stuff as many different places as i can because i know those mm-hmm. kids you know we meet them all you the time. are you are those yeah. we are those yeah. kids yeah i never knew that 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 song in Lost in the Sound of Separation was about that, Spencer. And, yeah, and that, take a look uh, at it again now. It, it's, it's yeah, pretty... Yeah, that's awesome. You know, like, there's a line dance around my head about cleaning up myself and all that stuff. Like, I'm I'm sitting there thinking about it and then just mm-hmm. admitting that I was a liar and that we're just, we're pretty much not where we're supposed right. to be, you know, and just surrendering, you know. But you, but you admitting it was kind of farce and you admitting that you know uh, you yeah. weren't about that life that's you know that is speaks massively about you and character and it speaks massively about where your heart is or wants to be or can be especially for right. other people because a lot of people like me I I I, I said I talked the talk but I didn't walk the walk oh Jesus mm-hmm. I was a, I was a phony Mm -hmm. and that I made a bad example and I turned people away. And then here you are, you know, everybody gave under oath such a hard time for, Oh, the new album is blah, blah. Well, if you would have listened, I was being honest. Mm -hmm. You know, I told you guys here, 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 and that's huge. And and, that's a whole, and that's a whole other story within itself. I mean, like a lot of the drugs, you know, and I don't think that, religion's a bad thing or Christianity. I don't bash Christianity. I get a lot of shit online about I bash religion and I bash that. I just sharing my truth and my story. And I, and I think it's everyone's entitled to believe what they want to believe in their, in their find what works for them. I don't think Jesus was a bad person, but I do think religion has a lot of bad tendencies to affect people in a negative way. Cause I'm a living example of one of them. Like it literally turned me into a drug addict cause I had nowhere else to go. I closeted all my feelings because I wasn't allowed to talk mm-hmm. about it. Because if we talked about the way we were feeling, you're out of the band because we're a wow. Christian band. You know, yeah. at the time, you know, it was a lot of pressure, and pressure turns into isolation, and isolation is like I'm finding a way to escape, which was getting high by myself. Because there's a lot mm-hmm. of pressure. But you know, fast forward, you know, ten years now, like would I take it back? No, because it, like you said trials it did make me the character that i am and i came out the other side like when i started that band i i didn't have a path to lead anyone down i didn't know who i was and i went through all this terrible stuff that i barely survived but i came out the other end a decent man that i believe wants the best for people and can share my story and and talk to people and like i'm i wouldn't change any of it you know, like, mm-hmm. I'm so glad that I'm here, and I'm I'm glad that I went through all the shit, even though it was terrible when I was going through it. And, like, yeah, I was bitter and mad a lot a lot at the, the church and the re- the religious people, quote-unquote. But then now... I am, later, too. Don't worry. Yeah. And then later in life, I'm like, but that's okay, too. Those are just people, you know? Yep. And, like, and I, I think that it's the best thing for some people and the worst for others. And it just is what it is. And I think you got to find what works well for you and i think that's okay you know 